Good morning. Like she said, my name is Mike. Um, I am going to start off this uh, um, Jesus throwdown. So, with a little background, with a little background on t- Adult Teen Challenge, it was started by a guy named David Wilkerson. Um, he was a rural pastor in a small town in Pennsylvania, and uh, and just due to his his lifestyle changes and choices and callings that he had on his life. He died, decided to get rid of his TV and, and to spend more time at night with just fellowship, uh, fellowshipping with God and allowing God to work on his heart. And, and instead of being distracted uh, by so many things that we can get so easily distracted by, he set some time aside, which is very important to, to, uh, to build a relationship with God, is to set that time aside. He set that time aside, and that's when, uh, through prayer and just a, a magazine, Life Magazine, he came across these boys that were uh, facing a, a trial for murder. They had um, they had a group of guys, a group of boys actually had murdered another younger boy. So that came across as a news article on a Life Magazine that came across David, and he decided, you know what? Why don't I go to that? Why don't I why don't I try to reach them? God is calling me to reach them. I know that I you know I come from the rural background, but why don't I go out of my comfort zone and, and do something that God is calling me to do? However, he never was able to reach or touch those individuals, those boys' lives. However, that was the thing that catapulted him into a uh, teen challenge. Uh, so he he due to his obedience and follow through and his faithfulness, um, he continued to venture into the city. He'd go back into the city and, and, and uh, deliver the gospel to the, the, the lost and the needy and the drug addicted and the life afflicted. Um, that ventured into a full-blown uh, ministry uh, with the help of uh, Nicky Cruz. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nicky Cruz as well. He's one of the uh, crucial members at the beginning. Uh, but him and, and Nicky Cruz really uh, uh, catapulted it into what it is today. It started in 1968. And now in 2021, there's over 1,400 uh, centers in over 120 countries. It started as a one center in New York City, what, like 50 years ago, is now touching the world and the lives of people across the globe. I, I am one of those individuals. Um, so what I really like to draw on is a scripture that's come to me lately. It's in Genesis 50, 20. Uh, where Joseph, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Joseph story, uh, where Joseph is, is gone through so much and, and he's gone through these events and circumstances that were out of his control and no matter what, doing the right thing, pursuing God, is in a place uh, that he's able to now uh, face his, his family, his brothers, who are the same ones who threw him into the, uh, this situation at the beginning. Um, but... He, he looks at them and says to them, hey, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. And for me, that really translates to the, the freedom and the hope and, and, and the love and the, uh, the, the, the point of Teen Challenge that, it, that it's brought into my life. Um, what, what the enemy intended for evil, uh, God really uh, could develop it and turn it into something good. Um, so, so no matter what, the, the, the murder incident in New York City drew David Wilkerson out and due to his obedience ended up developing this, this now ministry that has touched my life and so many of these guys' lives. Um, like I said, I, I was one of those individuals, so it was over a year ago that I entered into Teen Challenge and now I'm over... 15 months so it, the time goes by so like it's it's so it doesn't matter anymore it's the, every every day is a new day for me every day is a new blessing so it's don't keep track of those days so much as i concentrate on, on the day that we're living so i think it's 15 months uh that that i've become this this free being uh through my relationship with jesus and it's it's through teen challenge that i found this freedom um and and what really helps set us off when we come to the churches is not only uh, um, is is a few things your your worship and your relationships that you even if you guys just talk to us for a second and I had to say that that when we walk into your doors we can feel the presence and you guys are searching uh, for relationships so I just noticed that your guys' name is Connection Church and I, it was really cool and encouraging to feel that connection as soon as we walked in here and then to to avalanche that to to take that to a whole new level 
to feel you guys in this place and, and that worship was really cool too. So it really encourages us and helps us. So I thank you guys for having us here. Um, shortly here we're going to be watching a short little video on uh, more in depth about the day-to-day -day stuff at Teen Challenge. And then we'll hear from some of these guys individual. No, first then we'll hear them sing like angels. <laughs> and, and then we will proceed with, uh, uh, then go on to uh, some of their testimonies <laughs> and, and, uh, um, and hear how Teen Challenge and God has has touched their life because it, it was my relationship with God, but thank God Teen Challenge was there to make a way for that. So with no further ado, we will watch the video. Thank you guys. This book, The Christ and the Switchblade, really is a story of the origin of Teen Challenge. And it was one man moved with compassion to reach people that were suffering in gang activity, addiction in New York City. It's over 60 years ago now and it's multiplied the world over, there's 1,400 centers, and we represent one here in Wisconsin. Well, I started drinking and smoking at a young age, and I had my son Tyler when I was 18. I was in a relationship that was very physically and emotionally abusive, which led me to taking a variety of pain medication. And then when I was about 23, 24 years old, I started using heroin, and that's when I completely lost control. You know, the thing about addiction is it doesn't just affect the person that's trapped in addiction. It tears the entire family apart. Um, I don't believe my mom probably slept for years. She would just sit up trying to figure out how to help her son. I wouldn't answer my phone for six months at a time, and she was absolutely uh, going out of her mind. It's been said that there are two pillars in recovery, structure and relationships. And so such a core of Teen Challenge is structure. We're up early in the morning, we're doing chores, we're doing devos, going right into personal studies and group studies. And so it's this whole restructuring of how time is spent in a way that's gonna build up instead of destroy. And so that takes time and it's, it's slow incremental change over a 12 month period and it's, it's awesome. Every day our students do a great job operating our thrift store. Work therapy is an awesome part of our day. Last year we sold over 85,000 items at our store. Our store and many other social enterprise opportunities are a big part of each day. At Great Lakes Adult and Teen Challenge, we focus on our retail business, picking up and working on donated vehicles, select landscaping projects, car washes, and local warehouse work. Proverbs 22:29 says, do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. We help our graduates become strong, productive citizens in their communities. If I can describe my experience at Adult and Teen Challenge in one word, it would be restoration because my life's been completely restored. My relationship with my family has been restored better than it's ever been before, especially with my son. If my mom went to made that phone call, I don't know where I'd be today. I had over a dozen overdoses, and I don't believe I'd even be here today. I'm so thankful that she made that call. Recently, Evangel University wanted to take a look at graduates, and so they did a study, an independent study, on the success rate of Adult and Teen Challenge. And what they found was 76% of men and women who completed Adult and Teen Challenge remain sober. There is success and there is freedom available through a relationship with Jesus. If you need help in any way, uh, please consider calling 414-748-HELP. That's 414-748-HELP. Our helpline is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you call, uh, we can help you with the situation you're in and perhaps provide an opportunity for you to enter our residential program for women or enter our residential program for men. Morning. We don't sound like angels. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> but we don't do it, we do it for the Lord, so. Um, <laughs> my name's uh, Mike Spazzato. I'm 37. I, uh, I grew up in Chicago, still live there. Um, I've been in the program. 
I graduate this week, actually, yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a full year. Um, same thing, started out young. I made a lot of bad decisions. Um, led me down some places, you know, just bad decision after bad decision. Had a good family, pastors in my family, ministers, a loving family, constantly praying for me. Um, I have twin daughters, Isabella and Lucia. They're six. And, you know, I thought maybe after having them, things would get better, and they didn't. I just kept getting deeper and deeper. And I, and I had a relationship with the Lord. I did. But I don't know. I just wasn't getting it, you know. Things got worse, heavier drugs. I tried the secular treatments, the sober livings, all that stuff. Nothing worked. Um, till about last year, things got really, really, really bad. I just was doing things and in places I couldn't imagine. Um, running around Chicago's west side, just hanging around with people I shouldn't be around, just getting deeper and deeper in my mess. And, um, you know, my family never gave up. I mean, they never stopped praying for me. They were always there for me. Um, but this time last year, maybe around February, I got arrested. I was in Cook County Jail. And uh, I got out, kept doing my thing. And I just got to a point where I'm like, I, I, I can't do this anymore. So I called my father, and uh, him and my aunt came over. They had this pamphlet for Teen Challenge, and I, I was with it until I heard it was a year, and then I told them to basically leave my, my, my place. And they did. And it took a couple days, you know? It took a couple days for me to decide to come here. But it was the best decision I ever made. Um, it really gave me the things I needed and took away the things that they needed to take away. You know, when I was out there, I was involved in a lot of different things being in the city. Um, you know, I, 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 I overdosed on heroin. I've been shot at, been in the middle of shootings, been in places that just you only see on television, almost crashing my car. And, you know, the Lord told me one day, I can't remember specifically one, but he's like, Mike, when you overdosed, I was there with you. When you were shot at, I was, I was there with you. When your car was spinning out on your way to buy dope, I was there with you. And he brought me out of every single one of those situations. I was gone. I was dead for 20 minutes. My mother found me overdosed on her couch. And I survived, and he brought me out of that. And all this led me to Teen Challenge to lead me to this, to give my testimony. As I like to say, when I give my testimony, I punch the devil right in the nose. You know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a, that's how we defeat him, you know? And Teen Challenge was, I need a Teen Challenge. That was God's way. I wasn't getting it. Some people have an epiphany, boom, they're good. Me, it took a whole year of Teen Challenge, and it was exactly what I needed, and it has changed my life forever. I will never go back to that old life. It, I am so different now. I, I'm at peace, and, and my, I'm worshiping the Lord. You know, my grandma's like, I can't raise my hands like that. She's like, you do it in the club. I can't do it in church. So, you know, I do it now in church, too. So um, thank you for letting me share. God bless you guys. Hi, I'm Robert, and I'm 56 years old, and this is my only second time doing this, so bear with me. <clears throat> um, I'm going to start about three works, weeks before I came to Teen Challenge. Um, I spent 43 years of my life drinking to this point, and uh, I'm in a basement using a brick for a pillow, um, counting change for my next beer. Um, it's just me, and believe it or not, I was looking at a hot water heater. This is where I'm at. And uh, <clears throat> I knew I was in trouble, in real bad trouble. And the people I was staying with, um, I asked them, I said, I really need to go to the hospital. And they, it was a drug house, there was alcohol, and uh, they were doing their own thing. So I don't know how it happened, but I walked myself to the hospital. I, I remember waking up there. Um, they had me secured, so I wouldn't fall out of bed. And uh, after so many hours, I needed a cigarette, and I wanted to leave, and they wouldn't let me. But uh, being the stubborn old man I am, I left and uh, walked out. 
After that, I don't remember much, but 24 hours later, I was back in that hospital. The same nurse, the same security guards. And again, after about 12 hours, I said, I want to go. And I did. And again, I don't remember much except for looking for a guy I used to work for, for money for beer and cigarettes. And uh, his daughter was there, and she says, do you need an AA meeting? I'm like, yeah, I do. And I was in pretty rough shape. So it took an hour and a half to find, find the meeting because of COVID, and it was at a church in their, you know, their extra building there. And they had to leave, and they left me sitting on the sidewalk. Um, just a little while later, a gentleman named Ron pulled up, and uh, he was opening for the meeting. And I asked if he needed help, and he just smiled at me because I'm sitting on the sidewalk, you know. He says no. Um, a little while later, people started showing up, and a couple ladies gave me some cigarettes, smoked some cigarettes, and helped me off the sidewalk and into the meeting. Um, and when it came time for me to share, I completely lost it. Um, I was empty. It was hard. Um, <clears throat> so much happened at that time. But the next thing I know, this gentleman, Ron, I've never met him, ever. And I'm at his house. He's giving me a shower told me to take a shower, gave me clean clothes, um, put me to sleep on his couch. Never met this guy before. The next morning, he says, you just sit in the house, you eat all you want, the fridge is full, you just rest. And uh, um, I'd, he had bought me a couple packs of cigarettes the night before I went outside to have a cigarette and a cup of coffee, and there was cornfields and steers in a barn next to him. I'm like, well, I'm definitely not in the pack anymore, so. Um, so this went on for a week, and I literally ate him out of house and home because I had not eaten. That was one of the, my issues. I quit eating. And uh, he was making calls and stuff uh, on the Internet and making calls trying to find a place for me to go. And because of COVID, it just wasn't happening. So uh, when I left my house, I left all my clothes, pictures, everything behind, and he took me to Foundations for Living. It's kind of like what Teen Challenge's store is like. And uh, he gave me some clothes, and there was a pastor there, Pastor Pete. And uh, I sat with him for about 10 minutes, and he says, do you want to go to Teen Challenge? And like, I didn't know what it was, and I said, yes, I would very much like to go. He says, well, it's a year-long Christian-based program. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I am done. I'm empty. And uh, within two or three days, I was at Teen Challenge here in Milwaukee. Um, at first, you know, I, I was a mess. Um, at first, uh, I didn't know what to make of it. I just went with the flow. But after some time, I, I, you know, seeing the senior students, Mike and Ron and them, seeing what they had, I wanted it. And I, at churches, I started to feel it, you know. I didn't know what it was. I started crying, you know. And I learned later that it was the Holy Spirit. I'm like, all right, this is great, you know, and I want more. And then <clears throat> doing all my work, we do a lot of work and stuff, I found out, or I believe, that when I walked to the hospital, when I was in the hospital, when I should have been dead from not eating and drinking, the Holy Spirit was there already. And then I asked another question, you know, why me, 56 years old, just a crabby old man? And what keeps coming in my mind is that God has a plan for me, you know? So, thank you. Um, it has been a true pleasure to be with the gentleman there at Teen Challenge. I mean, it's changing my life. And I've been there for eight months now, and then I see the new guys coming, and it's just an awesome place. So thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Romero Torres. And all my friends call me Ram, so please bear with me because this is my first time giving uh, my testimony. So believe it or not, I wrote on a little cue card because it would help me. You would think it's my life and I would be able to kind of share, but I'm really nervous. And believe it or not, coming here to Connection Church was a beautiful place. Thank you very much for uh, having my brothers, Team Challenge, and, and myself. I feel very much at ease, at peace, so it's not as hard as, hopefully not as hard as, as I thought it was going to be. But anyways, uh, uh, I'm one of eight children. Uh, I was born in Chicago. 
I'm going to turn 48 in a couple weeks. Um, I grew up in a poor family. My dad was uh, a bull rider. He came from Mexico. He was uh, able to come to California, uh, Arizona, back and forth uh, until he landed in Chicago. That's where my brothers and I were born. Um, my dad was very hardworking. He was uh, a cowboy type, the type of person that uh, he loved his family, but he would never show love to his kids. As long as he provided for them, uh, made sure they had what they needed as far as uh, roof over their head, food on the table, that's what was important to him. Uh, as I later grew up, my teenage years and everything else, he would take us to the racetrack. I have a, uh, two older brothers, one of them which became a jockey. He was very successful. He started ri race riding at the age of 16. And every little kid wants to be like his older brother. So there I was watching what he was doing, wanted to be like him. He made a lot of money. He, uh, he did very well, so I wanted to fo follow in his footsteps. Being that I was raised Catholic, I ended up uh, being around the horses. And when you're at the racetrack, you work seven days a week. And as I got older, I had faith, but I never practiced it. That makes any sense. On Sundays, when I was working, I would make the excuse that, oh, I have to go to work, not making uh, time for, for God, for Jesus. As I started getting older and I became uh, also a jockey, I won like five, 500 races or so, but I ended up getting hurt in a, in a spill, in a race. Uh, my horse broke its legs. I went down. I broke my back. I broke my leg. I was out for like about eight months. Uh, like every typical story, the uh, prescribed um, prescription pills, uh, when I was out and I was uh, starting to get healed, I was addicted. So I would try to get them off the streets. Being that you're in a racetrack, it's a very fast pace, so everyone pretty much drinks and does drugs. I hate to put that bad cloud over the racetrack, but it's a sporting event, so you guys can just imagine how, how it real, real life really is. So I would find an excuse if I had a great day and I want to race, I wouldn't want to drink. If I didn't have a good day, the excuse was, well, you know what, let's have a drink. All my friends wanted to drink. Let's go, let's go out, let's celebrate, you know what, tomorrow's a better day, let's go have a drink, and so on, until I became a full-pledged alcoholic. What I am now is a child of God. I'm a reborn Christian. I really believe, thank you. I really believe by three words that I live by, and I'll explain here in a little bit. Number one is listen. Number two is love. And number three is faith. And what I mean by, by that is I met my wife at the racetrack. She had two little boys. She had been divorced. I fell in love with her. I was with her for seven years, and then I married her. Then we had two kids of our own. So in total, we had four kids. The same things that I was doing was what I learned from my dad, to work hard, to work hard. So when I would make money... My mentality was, as long as I give my wife the money that I made, I'm doing my part, which is not the way to do things. I learned now. Uh, I failed miserably as a father, as a husband, and as a Christian. So in the process of doing things wrong, uh, I lost my marriage. I lost the relationship with my kids. I lost my home. I lost my possessions as far as cars, which, which I thought was... If you have fancy things that makes you look successful, that is not at all what I've learned at Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge, being with my brothers and how they've taught me and how I've learned is that the things that you do as far as work or anything you do, you do for God. You do for the Lord first. I learned that the rewards that you will receive will be greater in heaven. I've learned uh, through John 3.16 is that he loved the world so that he sent his only and beloved son to die for all our sins so get, we can have eternal life in heaven. And I really believe that. So I compare myself to Job in the Bible. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that story. Uh, Satan goes to Jesus and tells him that if, since Job is, has all this wealth, animals, family, and everything else, if he takes that away, that his faith in him will, he'll, he'll curse Jesus into his face. And Jesus says, he will not. I know how strong his faith is. If you want to test him, but all I ask is that you do not take his life. 
So he does. Job loses his family, his wealth, his health, but he never lost his faith. So I compare myself to him because I'm thinking, I lost my marriage, I lost my home, I lost my kids. But in all reality, I really believe that God brought me to him, and he's never forsaken me. I'm never, I haven't lost him. So that, to me, is the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all. So being that I'm reborn and I'm learning to live through him, I really believe that that is the way to go. So I have faith. One of the three words. Love is something that I think all of us should have for him because he died for all our sins. So I, the scripture that I, that I, one of the scriptures that I really believe in and I, and I live by is Job 33. But if not, then listen to me. Keep silent, and I will teach you wisdom. That's one of the hardest things that I've always had a hard time because I'm hard-headed. I've always wanted things my way, but I try to listen. I try to listen now. Team Challenge is one of the biggest ways that he's helped me and guided me to be able to listen because with them, I cannot go wrong. Thank you very much, and that's all I have. So. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. And I uh, just want to say your worship was really, really good this morning. I, it was very heartfelt, and I got into it a lot. And uh, I, my prayer today is that you walk out the doors differently than you walked in, because if something we say um, doesn't connect with you, if we, if we don't get a little bit more revelation of who God is, then we kind of wasted our time walking through those doors today. And uh, I want it to be more than just a challenge for, uh, commercial for Teen Challenge. As much as I love Teen Challenge, I, I'm hoping that what we say affects you in your personal life and that uh, change will come to you today also. So um, it's easy to worship God in good times. And uh, I was reading uh, Numbers 21 the other day about the Israelites after they had just... Uh, they, God defeated the, the Canaanites in a kind of a, a great fashion like God always did with the Israelites. And the Israelites started to grumble and complain. And uh, I can relate that to my life because life was going real good. I was, uh, had been married for quite a while, raising kids, was uh, in church. And it was real easy to worship God through those good times. And then adversity started to strike. And uh, I, in a six-month period, I... I uh, my marriage was over, my house was gone, my truck was gone, and pretty much everything a man could lose, I had lost. And uh, like the Israelites, I grumbled and I complained. I became unthankful and bitter and resentful. And uh, in the rest of the story of Numbers 21, fiery snakes were sent among the people, and they would start biting the people and killing them. And I think like 22,000 died in a day. And the people cried out to Moses to do something about it. And uh, in my case, the fiery snakes were, were pretty self-made. You know, I started self-medicating to, to bury the pain with anything I could. And it ended up with a, with a heroin addiction. And uh, I, I started getting in a, quite a bit of trouble because, because of my uh, self-medicating. I still held a job. I, I, you know, according to my boss and everybody around me, they still thought I, you know, they knew something was up, but they couldn't put their finger on it, but my life was unraveling quick. I started getting in trouble with the law. And uh, what happened with the Israelites is uh, they asked Moses, they said, talk to God for us. And uh, he did. And what God told them to do was take a standard and put a, a snake on it. Now these snakes, these fiery snakes, I did a word study on it, and they were called fiery for three reasons. They had a venomous bite that killed, they had red on their head, and when they got aggressive, they'd puff out their scales and they had red underneath their scales. So he would take this snake on a standard and hold it up. Well, that snake is representative of Jesus Christ on the cross. And they were red because Jesus was torn and bled so that I didn't have to punish myself the way that I was punishing myself. You know, he, he bore my sickness and, his, and, and my scars and all my hurt on that cross. And uh, he's a standard that if we look to, and if I would have looked to, uh, it, I could have 
worshiped him through those hard times. And uh, it, it was a big learning lesson for me that uh, we worship God in the good times and the, and the hard times. Okay, so, you know, the, the Israelites obviously, you know, move on from that point. And so did I. I ended up uh, in Teen Challenge. And uh, one of the words... Or, uh, verses that I stand on is Psalms 91.4. It is he who delivers me from the snare of the trapper and the deadly pestilence. And time and time again, I'd, I'd get sober. I, I would try to help myself get out of this snare that I basically, Satan set for me and he meant to steal, kill, and destroy from my life. And, uh, but God came to give me life and more abundantly and I kept trying to get myself out of this snare. And... Uh, I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it on my own. The more you struggle in a snare, the more entrapped you become. So uh, I, I end up at Teen Challenge against all odds because I, I should have been in jail. Uh, my bail got re was at a, a really high rate for the first time ever because I just wasn't getting it. You know, I kept getting behind the wheel under the influence, and they're like, okay, this time you're not getting out. And they did, and that was the right thing to do. Um, God's grace kept me from hurting anybody, thank God, um, because, and uh, I, I couldn't blame the judge if he would have kept me in there forever because I, I really was not getting it. But while I was in that cell, I said, Lord, whatever is left of my life, you know, I, my way is not working. You know, I, I keep thinking I got it. I think, keep thinking I got it on my own, and then I fall into the same habits and uh, the destructive behaviors, and in a, a six-month time, Three times I'm in a jail cell, and this time it looks like I'm not getting out. And I just happened to get a judge who has spoken at some of our graduations at Teen Challenge. And he takes my bail and he reduces it from $25,000 to a signature so that I can get out and go to Teen Challenge. And uh, just to share with you what happens at Teen Challenge, every night we have something called Bible time, and where you read your Bible from 9 to 9.30, and for some of the people, they've never read their Bible. They've never cracked it open before, so it's really different from them, for them. And uh, I, I wanted to go to Teen Challenge because it was a God-orientated, uh, um, you know, form of uh, getting better, of restoration. So I was looking forward to it. So this one night, I'm, I'm reading about the, the pearl of great worth, you know, that there's a certain merchant who goes out looking to purchase pearls, and upon finding one of great worth, he sells all that he has so that he can purchase that pearl. And we had just, on Wednesday night, been to a, a church where what was taught was that uh, if we only knew how much God was worth, we would be able to, we would sell everything that we had so that we, we could have this pearl of great worth, which is God. And I was thinking, sitting there thinking to myself, wow, I, I love that teaching. And then the Holy Spirit kind of whispered in my ear and asked, he said, so how much did you pay for me? And I was like, what? Like having an argument in my head here. And he says, how much did I cost you? If, if you gave up everything, what did I cost you? And I said, well, I'm, I guess you really didn't cost me anything. I gave you a seat of faith and, he, and basically believed what you said. So he says uh, back to me, he says, well, um, where'd you get that seed of faith? And I said, well, I guess you gave that to me too. And uh, he had me reread the scripture. And as I was, he, God has always spoke to me in pictures. And in, in, you call them visions, mind pictures, whatever you want. But I saw Father God and Jesus up in heaven looking down on me the last time I used, which just happened to be right across the airport from Teen Challenge, and I had no idea at that time that Teen Challenge was there. But this particular day, I, I was sick because I hadn't used for, for a few days. I was trying to quit on my own once again, and because I hadn't used, my tolerance went down a little bit. But anyways, I, I'm, I'm sitting in my car, impatient, because I, I couldn't find a vein because I had used so much over the last six years that I was having a hard time finding any place to inject. So in my impatience, I adjusted the mirror, pulled my collar down and puffed out my juggler vein and injected into my juggler vein. And at that moment, I saw God nudge Jesus and, and say, there is a pearl of incredible worth. And he asked Jesus, he said, are you willing to die for him? And I um, 
Jesus looked back and he's like, oh yeah. And it, it blew me away. It was, uh, you know, I've always known the sacrifice that Jesus made, but I never really understood who Father God was because I, I kind of had a very authoritative father. You know, so I looked at him at the, as being a genius, but being kind of strict and always ready to, to smack you when you were doing wrong. But at that moment, when I saw the way they looked at each other, it, it, it blew me away. And uh, he went from being Father God to Daddy God, and he kind of gave me the calling for the rest of my life that uh, no matter what we're going through, uh, and no matter what we've done in our past, no matter who a person is, there's no throwaways. God does not make throwaways. He doesn't make junk. And no matter how low a person has been in their life, I'm going to love them the way God loves them, and I'm going to. My calling is to go out and tell people that have sinned, the criminals, the prostitutes, the, the strippers, the you name it, drug dealers, that Jesus loves you. He sent his very best for you. And uh, that's what I plan on doing for the rest of my life. And thank you for your time. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Jacob. I am from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and I am a graduate of Adult and Teen Challenge, now intern. I graduated with Mike. Um, you know, my story is I, uh, my parent, my, my mother was a bartender and my dad was a musician, so I grew up in a bar, and uh, my dad was never in my life, and I was just, I was lost, and um, I went to three different high schools, and uh, I ended up being addicted to cocaine. And uh, I'm just so grateful for Adult and Teen Challenge, a place where um, I was able to learn about the love of Jesus Christ. Um, a place where all of us who are lost and broken get to, get to experience the life-changing power of, of Jesus. Um, and so I'm just so grateful for that. Uh, Adult and Teen Challenge is a non-government funded program, and what that means is uh, we t accept no money from the government. It's all ran off of donations, so um, there's a couple ways you can, you can help us to, to fund the program, and we have a donation table in back where we have some crosses that people make in the program, and there's some necklaces and a book called uh, The Cross and the Switchblade, and that's about where uh, Mike told you about David Wilkerson. It's a book about the story of how Adult and Teen Challenge started. Um, coming up on May 27th, we have a golf outing. If any of you guys like to play golf and would like to come to Milwaukee and uh, play golf with some of our students here and, or just support the ministry, you can come out and there's more information in the back about that. Um, another way is we have an auto donation program. If you have any cars that don't run or if you have a car that does run and you would just like to donate to the the ministry will give you a tax write-off slip and we'll come get whatever car it doesn't have to run we have a tow truck and some guys who know how to get it up there and we'll uh, bring it back to our center and then the another way is we have a thrift store it's called super thrift and uh, we have some really nice clothes and stuff we also come and get donations but we're pretty far out here so we probably won't come out here if you call us for donations but uh, um, I'm just uh, so grateful to be here today. I, I would like to thank you for everything, and thank you for having us. Thank you. And uh, as they were telling their story, I was just reminded, I was just reminded that uh, you don't need to be a drug addict, or you don't need to be a pastor, or you don't need to be this, or, that everyone has their individual story. So it, it's, and, and each individual story is given, to God, given by God, and, and, and that's what matters. You don't, you don't have to have this tragedy or this, this, this good upbringing is that your story matters, our story matters, and, and to tell it because there's power in it, not only for yourself, but for everyone around you, um, that God is good and his love is great, and uh, we are his children. So thank you again for having us here, and uh, God bless. We are truly privileged to have had you share this morning. And a reminder for all of us that all of us have sinned, have come short, and God in his greatness has redeemed us. Amen? It doesn't matter what your story is. There is no degree of sin in God's eyes. 
We are all equal, and he loves each one of us, and he sees each one of us. So we are so grateful for that. I'm going to ask the adult and teen challenge, if you would please stand. I'm going to ask everyone to raise their hands toward them. We want to pray for them today. We want to ask God to bless these men to make their relationships sound with God and that they will walk faithfully with him from this point forward and also just to bless this ministry in general. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us, that you loved us enough to come and die for us, that you loved us enough that, Lord, whatever it takes, you pursued us. And for these men who have been a part of the Adult and Teen Challenge, you pursued them. You provided this place for them to come and to receive what you have for them, that they can receive your redemption. And we pray, Lord, as they've given their testimonies today, that they will resound not only in our ears, but in their hearts. Lord, that they will go forth from this day forward, trusting you and believing you and serving you with their whole heart that their lives are not wasted, you have a purpose for them, and that you will use them mightily in all that they can do for you. We pray, Lord, that you would bless the teen and adult ministries throughout this country and, in, Lord, in the other lands where exist, that you have opened doors for men and women to come that they might learn of you and to change their lives. So we ask your blessing upon them and all that is done in that name. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Dismiss us and amen.